Hi, I'm Joe Floyd, and welcome to the Emergence Playbook. Today we have Jet McCandless, CEO of Project 44. Jet, well, welcome to the show. Give us a little bit of your background and why you decided to become an entrepreneur. Yeah, great. Thanks for the opportunity, Joe. Uh, it's great to be here at the MCAP office. Um, why did I decide to be an entrepreneur? Well, uh, for me, it was a matter of necessity and also desire. So it was the freedom to mm -hmm. be able to um, create and innovate, um, build ideas that I thought would bring value to folks in my community and um, you know industries that I was passionate about. Also a combination of, uh, of, of necessity. So, uh, What do you mean by necessity? Uh, for, for myself, uh, growing up in the, in the neighborhood that I did and the economic situation that I did, that um, the fastest way to uh, build credibility um, and, that, and that was to, to have successes. And so waiting for other people to recognize um, what you're capable of or what those successes are um, seemed like a slower track than just going out there and um, building the, that, that track record myself. Yep, okay, that makes sense. And so uh, from a background prior to uh, launching Project 44, what were some of the things you did and, yeah. and some of the entrepreneurial angles that you did at bigger companies? Yeah, there's, uh, it, was, it was great. Um, probably the first startup that I was part of was a company called Global Trans based in, in Phoenix, Arizona. Mm -hmm. uh, we super fortunate run there. We did the zero to 80 million, no outside capital. Uh, and then there was uh, some, some private equity that, that came in. Well, that was an awesome run. What was uh, so successful about that is we had that hyper growth during the, the great, great recession. So uh, really yeah. exciting, exciting run there. Nice. Um, also opened a consulting firm af after that. Uh, Self-financed, and that, that company's done done well. Uh, both those companies are, are Inc. 500 companies, and they were just awesome to be be part of. Uh, and just the, the learning opportunities I went, went through that and the folks I met was absolutely incredible. Yep, okay. So tell us a little bit about Project 44. Yeah, Pro Project 44 is what I'm most passionate about. It's uh, it, it's certainly, out of everything I've ever been part of, the most passive, the, the, the company that's easiest for me to rally around. It takes every... Uh, learning experience I've had in life and every passion really combines them, them all together and uh, takes decades of, of, uh, of relationships of, of building on. But Project 44 is, uh, the name came from uh, the old Route 66 used to go from LA to uh, Chicago. And that, that highway system created a lot of bottlenecks, a lot of challenges, um, how, how trucking and commerce could happen. Mm -hmm. And when they built Highway 44, that was uh, Project 44. And you know that on the physical side of the infrastructure um, opened up commerce, importing, exporting in this country, which was phenomenal. So we thought on the uh, we're opening up capacity and um, optimization on the digital side of trucking and logistics. So we called ourselves Project Forty Four. It's originally a placeholder, but it just kind of stuck, and uh, so we ran with it. Yeah, and so I guess go a little deeper into the specifics of what you do, kind of bringing digitization to to trucking. <clears throat> yeah, so we're focused on automation, optimization, and visibility for the trucking and logistics industry. We're really focused on that customer journey, whether it's a shipper, which could be a manufacturer, distributor, mm -hmm. um, e-commerce company, or a third-party logistics company, maybe like a freight brokerage. But we're focused on that customer journey all the way from the quote to the invoice. And throughout that step, um, there are a lot of manual processes that happen or legacy technology that happen that takes, takes place there. So what we want to do is we want to make that digital experience with, with modern uh, connection. And so we really focus on that uh, communication layer. Yep, that makes sense. Okay. And, you know, your experience at Global Trans and your experience in consulting were very much industry-focused experiences. Yes. And Project 44 <laughs> is very much a technology, API-driven, modern framework type of company, tech kind of startup. So how, <clears throat> how did you make that transition uh, pa painfully. <laughs> uh, you know, I think that, to be to totally candid, uh, initial approach to it was probably with um, a combination of being naive and also uh, probably some, some arrogance on how it um, could take uh, su the past success record and just apply it over and uh, let, let me show the, the, the technology sector you know, what's, what's really possible here. Uh, fortunately, along the way, though, uh, I was able to meet some some great people like yourself, um, some of the other VCs that we worked with, and provide some great guidance throughout this transition. Um, they're very much different. There's the consulting company, you know, services had a lot more similarities uh, for hyper growth than uh, than the brokerage did. Uh, the tech is is an out, outlier when we look at um, how to really build and, and grow these companies. Um, mm -hmm. 
when you look at uh, the speed of decisions, um, when you look at how the team's structured, you look at the amount of capital that's, that, that it takes, um, it takes a lot more um, finesse and design uh, and not as much muscle as some of these other companies you can kind of power through. Yeah. So talk a little bit about, about the team side, uh, the technical team side. So how does somebody without a technical background go about recruiting and, and building sure. that, that sort of an organization? And then how do you, how do you <clears throat> translate the business and industry knowledge that you have into a tech product? Yeah, it's for us. It was a journey, and I think we're still part on that on that journey now. I'm happy when I look at the team um, that, that we've assembled. It's uh, just incredible when I look about all the, all the technical talent that we've been able to attract, and it's it's for a number of of, of reasons. But that wasn't the case uh, three years ago, or three and a half half years ago when we started the company. In fact, um, if I had the, like probably a lot of stories, if I had the knowledge that I had had now and had started with um, you know a different technical uh, acquiring technical talent uh, with a different strategy, then would um, you know it probably would have accelerated the company. But I'm not sure I would have learned as much throughout that that process. Um, others I got uh, involved with local uh, associations in, in the Chicago uh, network, um, leveraged the the network that I had of folks that may have had uh, relationships um, specifically here out in in, in the valley, yep. and just. Um, you know that old saying that you are the sum of the five people you hang out with the most. Just kind of, um, you know, was really uh, conscientious about how I was spending my time, who I was spending my time with, the books that I that I read. Um, of course, you know, Silicon Valley. No, just kidding. The TV show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's where I get all my tips. Just kidding. Um, but really, it's about it's just about being very conscious about um, all the actions and changing your habits and yep. making sure you're accomplishing your goals. Yeah. So you mentioned some books. So what are what are some of the books that you found useful along the way? Yeah, a co- com- combination of different books. So, uh, you know, the book that you know we're reading as a company right now, it's it is has, has a little bit of age on it, but the Amazon way mm-hmm. uh, was 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 really helpful. Uh, when we were looking at building the team and um, uh, looking at how how do I need to uh, uh, adapt as a CEO from domain to to technical, uh, the Who book that that you recommended was really valuable. Also. Uh, Five dysfunctions of a of a team was was really good. Uh, scale it and nail it also had a positive impact. Yep. Uh, predictable uh, re- revenue is also another uh, great great book. Um, but for me, I, if, um, you know, if you uh, if, if you come to my my office or, or my house, you always just see there's there's usually you know about five or ten books that are that are open, just constantly just yep. mining information through. But zero to one was also had a, a great great impact early on. Yeah, phenomenal book. Um, and so you also mentioned people. So. How, do, how does somebody go about finding good mentors? Uh, particularly, I mean, you were you were super successful in in the industry. So how do you how do you go about finding mentors in a new industry, in like the tech industry? How, how did that go? That was that was an interesting journey. You know, I had a um, a coach that was phenomenal for for so many pieces, and um, you know he. He actually tried to talk me out of becoming a, a, <laughs> a, a you know a tech tech CEO. He said, um, you know, the risks are high. What do you have to gain from it? Uh, you have this this track record as a domain expert. Um, you know, are you sure it's worth the risk? Uh, so you have to. You, you really just have to. Um, you have to have this strong desire and, and conviction as to what you want to accomplish in it. Um, for for me, on how I went along looking for for mentors. Um, you know, you you yourself were had a huge impact on on us. You know, being associated with the um, MCAP team. Uh, I was really lucky. Also, we had. Um, a relationship with Chris Bisco over at Omidyar mm-hmm. uh, that developed about two and a half, three years ago. Uh, and he was very um, helpful with just making contacts, but really just being a sound, sounding board. At that time, they were not an investor in Project 44. We just took the time to develop a relationship. And then in Chicago, uh, Chicago Ventures, our, our VC, did a great job of plugging us into the local community of tech. And that allowed us to just change the circle of friends and how we were spending our time. Yep. So you've mentioned Chicago a couple times. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm very curious. I mean, it's not the, the first place that people would think a technology startup would be born. So give us a little background on why Chicago and what are some of the, the amazing benefits. So we're based in Chicago for the weather. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we're, we're, uh, Chicago is the transportation trucking hub of, of really North America. Yep. Um, has hands down some of the best domain ta- talent there. And for anyone that's anyone in trucking and logistics, they go through Chicago at least once a year. Yep. Uh, and usually multiple times a year. For, so for us, it, it made a lot of sense. We had a, a strong, being domain 
uh, guys, we had a lot of contacts there, and we knew that the, the funnel people uh, would, would be pretty wide there. But what's interesting is we started uh, digging around, and we started looking at the technical talent. Uh, it had a really strong, strong talent. It has phenomenal work ethic. Um, there's a lot of successes there. Uh, you guys have even had some success there in the, in the Chicago market. Um, and certainly they don't, um, they're not as much in, in the media as some of the, the companies out here. And uh, I'm not going to compare Chicago to San Francisco with the numbers of successful technology companies, but there is a, a nice ecosystem there and it continues to, to grow every month. Yeah. And so uh, what are some of the things that you do to bring startup culture to Project 44? And so for, for, for us, that, that was a big adjustment for me, to be, to be candid. Um, coming from domain hyper growth companies, um, the combination of carrot and stick used is quite a bit different than on the te te technology. Are you saying we're soft? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, to be honest, uh, it's, 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 not, it's not so much soft. It's actually, uh, in, in a sense, it's, it's a higher level of, um, of, of self-awareness. Mm -hmm. um, and with, with social matters and um, with uh, uh, how, how they approach, approach cha challenges. And so that, that creates a different set of dynamics on how you um, motivate the team. And so how you tie in the, the startup culture to success is, is also different. I, um, they weren't, uh, that, that, that team wasn't motivated as much with uh, monetary mm -hmm. uh, successes. And so... Every other startup we had done uh, was really he heavy on, on the incentive piece. Um, for us getting this, this, call, this startup culture right at, at Project 44 was about um, a highest level of transparency that, that I had ever had in my career. Listening to the, to the folks, uh, communicating with them, uh, recognition was also really important. Yeah. Then also, what are we doing for, uh, for the local community and for the, for the greater good? Uh, so really an awesome, awesome experience. Great. And so you've you've built this culture, and you've got to hire, continue to hire amazing people to foster it. So, what are some of the things that you do specifically for hiring? Given that you're an industry cloud, an industry focused company, do you focus on hiring people from the industry? Do you focus on people hiring technologists? Do you focus on SaaS? Like, what's your what's your recipe for success? That recipe um, continues to change and modify as we develop the team and as we come up with new challenges down yeah. the down, down the road. We have a, a combination of a few uh, technology experts. Uh, the president, Tommy Barnes, came from, from the industry. Um, also, our chief strategy officer came from the industry and also has a technical background. Um, and that's that's really it. What, when I looked at the technical side, we are enabling a very large uh, multi-trillion dollar trucking and logistics industry. And a lot of the technology folks that are inside the trucking logistics industry uh, are comfortable uh, with working with the legacy tech. Um, and they want to build, uh, they kind of want to just make a faster horse, if you yep. will. So we're really conscious on going for the technical talent from outside the industry, people that could recognize patterns um, that would be quick learners. Um, and, and, you know, it's, it, when, when we look at the future of what we're built, as, we, um, as the complexity increases and as these products mature, we will bring in some more domain knowledge, but I think we're constantly on the technical and product side, focus on acquiring the best talent from outside the industry. Yep. And then sales uh, is a little bit different. Uh, this is a, a closed, we, I like to think of this as a closed industry mm -hmm. and people can do things for, for people. So heavy um, with enterprise SaaS uh, talent, but also domain folks that have relationships that can kind of shake hands yep. and open doors. Okay. You, you talk about relationships and shaking hands yeah. and open doors. so. In, in trucking logistics in particular, it's such a concentrated market at the top. Yes. You've got, you've got, you've got a, 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 a small number of carriers who have a lot of power. You also have a small number of shippers who have a disproportionate amount of power. So how does a startup navigate, navigate that, that ecosystem? Navigating these, these massive companies um, can, be, can be challenging, can be difficult for a lot of startups. I think that there are a graveyard of, of startups out there in the trucking logistics industry that they weren't able to, to figure out that that, that secret sauce. Uh, we're really fortunate, um, you know, with Tommy and Mike on the team that, that uh, they, they have a lot of credibility in the space. Mm -hmm. So I think that, that creates a natural, uh, people are naturally inquisitive as to why would they leave successful companies like Coyote and Echo to come over to, to Project 44. They must have something spe yeah. spe special there. Um, but also I think uh, if your product solves a solution and um, you sit down, you talk to the, to the customers, you understand what it is that their challenges are, um, and you're able to help them uh, uh, accomplish their goals, 
they're they're willing to to listen. Um, yeah. And we see this it's kind of just change of tide of leadership at a lot of these large companies out there. And the the new guard is very open to uh, anything that can accelerate uh, their goals. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so last question, and then you're off the hot seat. Um, <laughs> I'm curious, what advice do you have for folks in other industry verticals that are experts in their industry but not technologists? Like, what advice do you have to them around starting a, a tech startup? If you have a strong desire and a will and the ability to reinvent yourself, um, you know, you should take take a shot at it. I think that complex industries will be this disruption or enablement of this. Uh, new generation of technology that is going to continue to happen. I do believe we're at the very beginning. Although it may uh, feel saturated in some ways, I believe we're at the beginning of this this new era that's coming in. Uh, but if you look yourself in the mirror and uh, you're willing to make the hard decisions of, of how you spend uh, your, your personal time, you know, circle of friends that, 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 that you're with, um, you're willing to leverage those relationships and kind of uh, uh, take another run at it, um, the most exciting companies uh, coming up will be these domain experts that solve from the inside out, mm-hmm. rather than the outside in. I think um, that, and if you have that in you, you should take a run at it. Yeah, great. And you you mentioned reinventing yourself. I think that's such an interesting way of phrasing it. And I feel like a startup leader reinvents themselves every couple <laughs> of years. <laughs> and so you have to be you have to be willing to to look yourself in the mirror every every year and say. What do I have to change about myself for this next phase of growth? And I love the fact that you're willing to do that and that you invest the time to, to really do that. Cool. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks, so thanks for coming on the show. Yeah. Um, this is Jet McCandless, CEO of Project 44. Thanks, thanks. guys.